Since the 9-11 collapse of Hillary Clinton, millions of people have watched videos on the body double phenomenon. And for good reason, as her miraculous recovery was too intense to believe. Too unbelievable to be true. Close-up pictures before and after the collapse seem to show slight differences. The new Hillary looked younger and somewhat thinner as well. This is some of the only known footage of Hillary before her collapse. When we compare this footage to the footage of her reappearance, the differences are slight. If this is a body double, the differences are so minute that it looks more like a twin than an actor. What makes things even more confusing, perhaps, was her first televised appearance after that collapse. She flickered on and off the screen, her and her podium, which suggests something else must be going on. And what's even more perplexing is that if you compile the different videos of her over the last month or so, we keep seeing two or three different Hillary's. The changes are quite remarkable for just being a few days apart. Look at the different versions for yourself. It's one thing to change over the years. It's another thing to change day after day. We've prepared a few different mini documentaries to help explain why people are seeing what they're seeing. And as time goes on, you'll understand that what you're seeing isn't a body double. It's more like Frankenstein's twin. Modern technology is far beyond where most people think it is. They can create a hologram and then project it anywhere in the world in real time. So this is what I look like as a hologram. In real time, they could change my voice, change my clothes, they could even multiply me. They say the possibilities are endless. What other applications do you see for well, this technology? Education, military, uh, politics, it can apply, be applied across the board. LED technology has improved so much that you can, in fact, today project a hologram in daytime without the need for darkened spaces. But this wasn't the first time a hologram performed on stage. You just heard the mainstream media report that this technology can be used in broad daylight and for politics. As for this footage here, this isn't compression error. This isn't some kind of bandwidth glitch. This has to do with what's referred to as chroma key layering. When you can see straight through the person and see the layer behind them, that's a chroma key error. And so if this is fake, then the implications here are huge. Right now we're standing inside Light Stage 6, which is our lab's largest device. This is the future of movies. What was once filmed on a soundstage is now shot on a light stage. This surreal laboratory is the brainchild of Paul DeBevic. He heads up USC's Institute for Creative Technologies, and he's reinventing the way movies are made by digitally cloning actors. We want to create that perfect digital puppet that has every skin pore, fine crease, and the ability for any little twitch or bulge or buckle of skin that the real person would have had. More than 6,000 computer-controlled LEDs and 50 cameras capture every nuance. The key to creating believable virtual humans is how the computer measures both the light reflecting off the surface of the skin and the light penetrating beneath it. It raises, I mean, that raises a really interesting question because if all that information is stored, eventually you could actually make a film with an actor who's no longer alive. Hopefully they can never do that without TV news anchors. <laughs> it's really scary. Yeah, well. Research has been underway for many years in biological synthesis, that is, artificial life forms. And according to high intelligence, a stunning breakthrough took place in Russia some years ago. The Russians refer to this breakthrough as a providential discovery, something they learned almost by accident. They discovered the key to creating what are known as organic robotoids. An organic robotoid is an artificial robot-like creature. It looks and acts exactly like a human being, and yet it is not human. A robotoid is alive in a biological sense, but it is an artificial life form. Robotoids respond to conventional routine medical tests in the same way as humans do. They eat, they drink, they breathe, they bleed if cut, and they can be killed. Robotoids can also think but they think only in the sense that a computer thinks. Like any other computer, the brain of a robotoid has to be programmed for each assignment it is given. But unlike many electronic computers, the biological computer brain of a robotoid possesses an enormous memory. As a result, robotoids can be programmed to communicate and think in such complex patterns that they act human. 
Organic robotoids are remarkable creatures, but they have many drawbacks. They don't grow or reproduce, but must be manufactured one by one in the desired form. They also have a very limited lifespan, measured in months or even weeks, depending upon how they are utilized. This is due to the fact that their metabolism, while it resembles that of humans, is very inefficient. A robotoid can be manufactured on very short notice, a matter of hours. But after a few weeks or months, it suddenly begins to degenerate physically and mentally. When that takes place, the robotoid has to be removed from service and disposed of. To extend its useful life as much as possible, a robotoid is customarily cooled down to slow its metabolism between assignments. Organic robotoids are extremely expensive, troublesome creatures to produce and utilize. And robotoid capabilities do not exceed those of human beings. All they can really do is simulate human beings. But my friends, for intelligence purposes, that's all they have to do. To produce an organic robotoid, it is necessary to have a pattern to go by. The pattern required is that of genetic coding taken from a few cells from the body of a human being. In this respect, the Russian technique sounds like cloning, but the technique itself is totally unrelated to genuine cloning. A robotoid is produced within a matter of hours and it simulates the human donor at his current age. Like any man-made copy of anything, a robotoid is never a perfect copy of the human that is to be simulated. There's always small discrepancies in appearance and behavior but these are seldom great enough to arouse any suspicion. The Hillary on the left appeared just before her 9-11 collapse. The Hillary on the right was her first appearance after that collapse. Why so many different looking Hillary's? Thank you. The white-haired man in the center is a synthetic person. Our first clue is his rate of blinking. He is blinking so fast that it is comparable to REM sleep, rapid eye movement. Whenever you insert a DVD into the drive bay or you plug in a USB drive, you'll notice a blinking light as the computer reads the data. Fast blinking means data reading or transmission. The circumstances of the shooting, of course, and that will have to be sorted out. Conflicting reports as well about his injuries. The injury said to be to the back of his head. We're getting word from the White House that they are slightly more optimistic than they were earlier this afternoon, but there's still no word. It's been long suspected that synthetic clones live among us. Some are part droid, others are more advanced. Everyone has seen these people on TV before. Now just imagine trying to function while blinking three times a second. Guess what Chelsea Clinton's apartment used to be. So we posted a link and we went to it, MetroCare Home Services Inc. The address, which is Chelsea Clinton's address, to the point, 21 East 26th fourth floor, New York, New York. And there is only one apartment per floor in the building. The yellow pages, the New York yellow pages, this is kind of, this is kind of crazy. It says the name again, and it says open now. Open 24 hours, it gives the address and the phone number. So it turns out Chelsea's apartment isn't what we think it is. It's an elite cloning center paid for by the Clinton Foundation. Moments later, the president was driven into Camp David and Mrs. Carter was rushed there from the finish line. But two hours later, saying he had had to be dragged off the course, the president showed up. Unfortunately, this phenom is nothing new. It's been happening for decades. It's time for people to wake up and smell the clones. If you're listening to this, you are the resistance.